first lesson comes from the book of Genesis, the 17th chapter, beginning at the first verse. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you an exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you, throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you, and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Here ends our lesson. Our second lesson comes from the book of Romans, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations according to what was said, So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. Here ends our second lesson. Our gospel lesson comes from the book of Mark, the eighth chapter, beginning at the thirty-first verse. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Here ends our gospel. Thanks be to God. Greetings, sisters and brothers. In Christ, um, for this second weekend of Lent, our message is called, It's All About Faith. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, for each of the five weeks of Lent, every week, our first reading is about a covenant 
between God and God's people. A covenant meaning a promise um, where between God and someone you know, uh, representing us, God's people, and what God promises to do in this covenant relationship, uh, and then what our part of that relationship is. And so last week we saw the first covenant. Um, it was between God and Noah, but not just between God and Noah, but between all living creatures, and in fact, bet between God and the whole earth itself. And in today's first reading, we see the covenant, and it says it's an everlasting covenant that God made with Sarah and Abraham. And through Abraham and Sarah, right, they are our ancestors in, in faith, and in fact, they are the father and mother of faith for Jews, Christians, and in Abraham's case, also for Muslims. So, today's um, first reading says Abram is 99 years old, and God calls him, and God says, this is the covenant I will make with you. Um, you will have many descendants, many nations will, will come through you, and so you will no longer be called Abram, which means exalted uh, ancestor, but you will be called Abraham, which means father of multitudes. And God also changes Sarah's name from Sarai, which means princess, to Sarah. It doesn't really give a, a definition for what her name means, but God in that first lesson says that to Sarah, that many nations will come to be through her also. And so despite their great age, God calls them into this covenantal relationship. And through their faith and their covenantal relationship, we are blessed to be in covenantal. We are those nations that came after them. We are their descendants who enter into this covenantal relationship with God through them and their faith. And I myself cannot hear uh, stories of Abraham and Sarah and their great faith without thinking of my own parents, Cliff and Helen Forsberg, who were both people um, growing up as a little girl. I so deeply remember them um, as people of incredible faith uh, who let that faith guide them throughout each and every day of their lives. My mother, my, my um, most predominant memory of my mother is my mother with her hands folded in prayer. And my father, um, after my mother died, um, for the five years um, after that, he would come to Bible study all the time here at church. And at the end of every Bible study, he'd say, well, it just goes to show you it's all about faith. And so that's the legacy that um, Abraham and Sarah, my ancestors in faith, gave to me, but also my, my physical, my earthly parents um, gave to me this legacy of faith. And so in today's gospel, um, we have Jesus trying to pass on his legacy to his closest uh, companions, to his disciples. And uh, he tells them that he will soon go to Jerusalem where he will experience great suffering and be killed, but that on the third day he will rise again. And his beloved friend Peter rebukes him, but Jesus rebukes Peter and says, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on the things of God, but on the things of humans. And Jesus then looks at all of his disciples, and that includes us, and Jesus says, whoever wants to follow me, you must deny yourself 
and take up your cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to, if you wish to save your life, you will lose it. But whoever loses your life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will find it. For what will it profit you to gain the whole world but to forfeit your life? And I remember being a very young woman in my early 20s and reading a book that changed my life. It was by a man named James Findlay. And he was a student of Thomas Merton. And he wrote a book about Merton's um, work called Merton's Palace of Nowhere. But the subtitle for the book by James Findlay was Discovering God through a discovery of your true self. And in that book, James Finley tells us that we should hear this, he quotes this exact um, phrase of Jesus about um, when, we, when we lose ourselves, we find our true selves. And he said to think of this verse with a lowercase l versus a capital L. If you try to save your life with a lowercase l, you will lose your life with a capital L. But if you're willing to lose your life, your lowercase l life, you will find true life. You will find life in God, life in Christ, life in the Spirit. That is the true life. And that is what Jesus came to bring to all of us, that life with a capital L, that true, abundant, eternal life that begins now, that we can live in eternal life right now when we have that deep, when we live our lives in that deep communion with God, with Christ, with the Spirit. And, um, and so now let's look back with that understanding of life at Sarah and Abraham. Okay, so um, God calls them at a very old age and God says, leave everything you know, leave your family, leave your kin, leave your homeland, leave everything and go to this land that I'll show you. And God promises to be with them, to give them land, to give them descendants more than the stars in the sky, more than the sand in the desert. And God promises to be with them and to bless them. And God says, I will bless you so that you then can be a blessing to others. And Sarah and Abraham say yes. They say yes. And they do it. They give up everything to answer God's call and to follow God's invitation. And that, talk about faith, right? And, um, but I really believe they had that sense of they were giving up their lives with a lowercase L in order to have that life with a capital L, that life that we find only in God, only in Christ only in the spirit. And so in our second lesson for the day in Romans, you know, Paul writes that um, because many um, in Paul's day, there was sort of a debate about how, how are we saved? How are we brought into right relationship with God? And um, some asked, well, many people taught that we do that through fulfilling God's law right? God's commandments, God's law. But for Jews, that means the Torah, the Torah. And, um, and, and Paul gives Abraham as an example because Abraham lived before God gave the people of Israel the law. The law came later through Moses. So then people said, well, wait a minute. What about those people who, who lived before that? What, how did, 
how did they, um, how did God come to them? They couldn't fulfill the law because they didn't have it yet. And um, so St. Paul comes and says, they received this gift of God's saving love through faith. They didn't have the law yet. They did it through faith. And Paul basically tells us that it's not through our works. It's not through anything we do that we can earn this saving love of God. That it comes simply through faith. As my dad always said, it's all about faith. And, um, but I think of um, myself sometimes, and would I have that faith of Sarah and Abraham? Would I have that faith of my mother and father? As a teenager sometimes, a rebellious teenager, I would get very annoyed with my parents. Their faith seemed so full and deep and absolute. My own seemed like really floundering and and struggling in comparison. And then uh, in my 20s, um, at a Bible study, uh, I went, went to a Bible study led by Rabbi David Flam of Brown University. And he said something amazing. He said, we Jews think of faith in different ways. There's Abraham and Sarah faith, which is absolute. God said, leave everything, and they say, okay. He said, there's that kind of faith. And then he says, then there's those of us who have a Jacob kind of faith. Remember the story of Jacob wrestling with God. And Rabbi Flam said, those are the people who, who wrestle with God. And remember, Jacob, God changed his name too from Jacob to Israel, which means one who wrestles with God. And I loved it because Rabbi Flam said something like, it doesn't matter which kind of faith you have. Not One's not better than the other. They're just different as we're all different. Every kind of faith, sisters and brothers, um, includes some degree of wrestling or doubt. Because if it didn't, it wouldn't be faith. Certainty is not faith. In the book of Hebrews, it says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. If we have what we hope for, if we, um, if we see it, if, we, if it's absolute, then it doesn't require faith. Then it doesn't require faith. So that really helped me. And then I even thought about Sarah and Abraham, and I thought, hmm, they had this absolute faith. But then on the other hand, when Abraham was traveling through Egypt, he said to Sarah, you're very beautiful. Um, men are going to want you, so why don't we tell them you're my sister instead of my, my wife so, so they don't kill me to have you? And I thought, wait a minute, that doesn't, that seems to show a little bit of doubt in this great father of our faith. And then when they didn't have um, children uh, for many years after God promised they would, Sarah decided to kind of mess with God's plan a little bit and take things into her own hands. And she said, here, this is taking too long for God to fulfill God's promise. Take my maid and let's have a child through her which was an acceptable thing to do in that time and culture. So she had her doubts too. And, you know, um, my mom, who had such incredible faith, used to worry a lot about her kids. And I used to think, you have such deep faith. Why do you worry so much? But sisters and brothers, I think the point of today's message is from this line in our second reading by St. Paul. He says, um, For this reason it all depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on 
grace and be guaranteed to all God's descendants. So sisters and brothers, it's, it's, um, it's not dependent on us at all. It's all dependent on God, who's always faithful to God's covenant with us. So may we continue our Lenten journey following in the way of faith, whether we walk with absolute faith, whether we have our little doubts here and there, whether we wrestle with God, it's all about faith and God's faithfulness to us. Amen. Faith of our fathers live.
now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.